y'all. It's another day at the Fowl House. Um, you saw us last. We finished up these cabinets on the upper wall. We are working under those now. We are working on the wall where the range and the hood are gonna go. Now we're gonna work our way around the kitchen and um, all the way around. Eventually we'll get around to the sink. So hopefully we have another productive day. We are on a roll this morning. We got this little base cabinet over here. We're working on this corner cabinet. Next, we're gonna make our way across. But first, we've gotta do a little bit of work on these two vents. Um, we are eventually going to cut a vent in the toe kick in the front of the cabinet. So we've got to direct that air. So we're gonna do a little bit of duct work first before we place that next cabinet. All right, so we have just placed all of the cabinets across here to make sure that all of our spacing is right. Um, I wanna show you this cabinet in line with the chimney because I think this is what's really going to make this look like the true custom built kitchen that it is. Um, we have a chimney in the middle of a cabinet run. So the way that we are addressing this is we had this custom cabinet built. You see it's only about, I think it's like seven inches deep. Um, and it was specially designed to bump up to the chimney so that those countertops are just gonna run flush. The front of these cabinets will keep going so that countertop will just wrap around the chimney. We've got little cabinets to go above the chimney. I think this is gonna look so good. This is what is gonna make it look like a truly well-finished kitchen. So we had to sort it all out. We're gonna do a little bit of filler here and filler here. And then of course our cabinet's gonna come this way and bump in and cover up that dead end. Um, typically we would do a Lazy Susan or like we have a, a cabinet built for a Lazy Susan here or one of those amoeba pullouts. But the homeowner liked the idea of a dead end cabinet. It was just kept it simple. Um, I actually have a dead-end cabinet, and I love it. That's where I keep random things that I only use every so often. Like, I have giant Easter eggs in my dead-end. Um, but this right here is going to be the showstopper. It is small but mighty. That's what's going to make all of this work. So these three are already set, installed, level, plumb, flush, all of that. And now we're working our way. We're actually cutting our half-inch filler on either side of this couldn't decide if we wanted to push it down and um, we have some play down here but we decided to center this with the chimney which I actually love okay it took lots of a tiny little shimming and leveling to get all of this level and plumb and flush but we're finally ready to turn the corner this is our sink cabinet and it's going to be centered under the sink it's not going to butt all the way up to this we actually have a six inch filler is going to go there so we've ripped a little bit of that down and hopefully our sink will be centered and then it'll be flush to that cabinet there um, we have to cut a drain two water lines and a plug in the back so we want to make sure it's exactly where it's supposed to be when we start cutting all right we are almost done in here. one of the things that we had to figure out was we have a 24 inch cabinet that goes right here and from the lowest point or the widest point between these two trims, we have 24 and three quarters. But of course, we're gonna have to cut some trim one way or the other. So we've been playing back and forth. Do we push it all the way over here and cut some of this? Do we push it all the way over here and cut some of that? Um, we have two goals. One, for it to look as good as it can. And two, for this cabinet underneath here to line up with that cabinet. So we've just played devil's advocate, tried every option, and we've decided that we have to go flush to that window. We're gonna cut that top part off. Now what, that was our first plan. And then we decided, well, maybe we need to go over this way. And that's because there's gonna be the tiniest little bit of wood left over. So our cabinets will go up 42 inches and that trim goes up 42 and a half but we have crown on the cabinets, which will make them just a little bit higher. This probably makes no sense. And when it's all done, you'll see it. But if we go flush over here, our countertop is gonna come into that trim, which is not good. So we've made the decision, we've gotta cut it. Here we go.
it's just really stressful to cut something that Jesus spent so much time making look amazing. Um, but this is the right thing. So the cabinet is going to pit flush up against this window all the way up. It's going to give us a slight little bit, about three quarters of an inch here and on the base cabinet. And then that countertop, that little bit of overhang can go right to this trim. So we waited to put this in because we'll put a filler here and we needed to figure this out to determine what the size of that filler is going to be. So we'll get this cabinet up, should be three quarters of an inch off of there, back off this way and then put our filler in there, which I actually like it's gonna be um, about three inches and that'll be nice. It'll even out with this one over here if we did our math right. <laughs> Um, so there we go. We've got that cabinet. And then the only thing left in here is this cabinet and this cabinet, as far as cabinets go. We've still got our wet bar in there. And then of course we've got to build our hood. We've got crown. We've got lots of other things to do. All right. So that cabinet is up and I think you hopefully can see now. We cut there and bumped it all the way up gives us a nice clean line. It gives us a clean backsplash. If we had gone that way, we would have had this weird little backsplash there. Um, and then that gives us just a little bit of wall space on that side. Um, so now we are figuring out exactly how to come down with our dishwasher end panel here. And then of course your dishwasher goes there. Next is this wall and the two cabinets that are gonna go there. This is also tricky. And the idea that we've come up with is to cut these window trims as well, but it's near the end of the day, so we're gonna sleep on this idea and see if something brilliant comes to me between now and then. Still in the kitchen, uh, still cold, raining today too. Um, and last I showed you, we were thinking about these cabinets over here. We did not get a better idea in our sleep. Um, I also talked to um, Lee, the cabinet rep. He didn't have a better idea, so that's what we're doing. We are gonna cut that window trim. We've actually already got the um, spacer or the filler on this piece and we're ready to put it up. So we trimmed that top little pediment, those two pieces of trim off of this window to make that flush. Here's our cabinet that's going there. We added a spacer or a filler so that it'll be flush up against that brick so that our doors will open easily and we just won't have any green space or any wall space between the trim and the chimney on either side. It'll just all be cabinet and filler. That was what we felt was the best way to do it. And through the magic of YouTube, those are hung. Um, this one's a little tricky because as you can imagine, that brick was not plum. Uh, so we had to, Jesus had to do some trimming on that filler. So anyway, that's done. And now we are turning our attention to the island. The island's really basic. I think I've told you guys before, nothing's happening in it. There's no water or anything. There's just going to be electrical because that is code and an island with no power is of no value. Um, so we've got it centered in the middle of the room. We have a light fixture that was roughed in to go directly above it. So we started there and figured it out. We've got pretty good flow around it. So we're gonna get these two work together, hook these up to each other, and then work on how we're gonna mount it to the floor. So just a little work island. All right, so the guys worked hard to get that island plumb and level and all of that so it's level with all what's around it. And then as soon as they knew exactly how many shims and all they need under it, they put down these two by fours. They ripped them in just a little bit. We have attached those to the floor. Then the cabinet will sit on top of these and we will mount the cabinet to those two by fours. And then we will be good to go in this kitchen. 
All right, guys, so for the most part, that's a wrap in this kitchen. Now, you've heard me say a bunch of times, we still have a lot more details to do. We've gotta do crown molding all the way around the top. We have accessories like pull out shelves and pull out trash cans that we have to install. Um, we've gotta get countertops in, then we do our backsplash. Once that's in, we do a light rail, which is a little trim piece that covers up the under counter lighting. So we've still got lots more to do, but for the most part, that's a wrap on this week and all of our kitchen cabinets. So come back next week. Who knows what we'll be up to. We may be in this kitchen. We may be somewhere else. I'll see you then.